internet algorithms. Uh, he has published his works, uh, his research in two books, five national conferences and 10 international conferences and 10 international journals out of which a uh, majority of the papers are indexed in Scopus, SCI and Web of Science. Uh, that's about it. Uh, over to you, sir. Okay. Oh, thank you for the introduction. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, uh, management of uh, MIT Manipal and as well as ISA. Uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity. Am I audible? <clears throat> yes, sir. Okay, yes. fine. Okay, so welcome you all for this webinar. So today I'm going to talk about the blockchain technologies and then use cases where we are going to see in terms of electrical power system. Uh, I will take the pointer just a moment. Okay. So today we are not going to see about anything regarding to the big data. We are not going to learn about machine learning, drones, cloud, internet of things, social web and mobility, much more than that. That is called as a blockchain. Otherwise we have to say that technological revolution. Otherwise we can say that the next version of internet. So these are the contents I'm going to deliver today. This is what my plan today. So first of all, I'm going to tell about the introduction and the definition of blockchain. So those who are uh, those who are not understanding this uh, definition. So for that, I have decided three level of understanding. I'm going to tell the three example of the blockchain technology. And then what is meant by block and then what are the functionalities will be there? And then what are the classifications of the blockchain? And then what are the use cases in the use cases concern world energy scenario? And then in the Indian perspective, how we are seeing the scenario? of blockchain. That is the thing we are going to see. So before concluding my speech, I'm going to tell about because we are having the vast opportunity to work on this blockchain technology. And then final thing is that mission towards nation. OK, so coming to the introduction and definition of blockchain technology. So many of them, they are misunderstanding is that Bitcoin is the blockchain technology. That is not correct. Bitcoin is the application of blockchain technology. Internet is there. Email, it is not an application, right? Email, it is not an internet. We can say that email is the own kind of application of internet. Similar to this, Bitcoin also, it's a kind of application of blockchain. So in that perspective, from the Bitcoin, Bitcoin means it, uh, it's a digital currency. From the digital currency only, this technology is getting evolved enormously. So in that aspect, I will start about the introduction point of view about the blockchain technology. And the Bitcoin enabled an innovative platform for peer-to-peer -peer transfer value. So peer-to-peer -peer tran transfer connection. What are the mail? What are the data we are sending it through the Gmail? Where it is going? Everything is going in the Google server. From the Google server only, the resources will be transferred from one computer to another computer. That is happening right now. Just you have to think another case of is that I am having the data. I will send it to my friend without any central authority, without any intermediary. So that is called as a peer to peer. So peer to peer transfer of value without any central authority. So that is the concept of blockchain technology. Okay, the next question, immediate question will come. With no central authority, how did Bitcoin realize trust and security? This is the next important question will come. So for that, we are going to write the software program. The software program, it will do the logical things. What are the things it will do means validation. It will do the verification and the consensus agreement should be made. If everything is happened means that kind of infrastructure is called as a blockchain. Okay, the next thing is that blockchain is about enabling peer to peer transaction in a decentralized network. Okay, so here what I'm trying to say, there is one computer. So another computer, they want to mutually exchange the resources from one computer to another computer. For that, what I'm going to, what I'm going to try to say in this circumstance, there will be a software program, logical program, we are writing it. And then that logical program consists of validation, verification, consensus. If everything is matched, if logically is matched, means the communication has been established. In this case, these are the two blocks. This software program, it is called as a chain. Okay, so when the communication has been established, after that, the transaction will happen from one computer to another computer. And then both are there having the register. So the values will be stored in the register. Once the values are entered in the register, it's a kind of tamper proof. So nobody can change it. So that is the beauty of this technology. 
so this register we cannot we cannot edit it we cannot change any values in the register that's why this register is called as an immutable distributed ledger so that point is uh, indicating here establishing a trust among unknown peers recording the transaction in a immutable distributed ledger okay so where is the origin of the blockchain technology see that consider a scenario where the customer wants to buy an item using his own uh, credit card first of all we are going to give the credit to the credit card to the merchant it will go to the one particular bank one gateway of that particular bank and then it will go to the another bank and then it will have the exchange finally it will go to the merchant's bank finally the merchant they will get it okay this is called as the best example for the central server client mechanism so everything is controlled by the server and we are the client here we are have we have experienced the two disadvantages over here the first disadvantage is that we are not only only we are not the only person we are using the credit card there are millions of people they are using the credit card so what will happen here lot of millions of transaction will be stored in the server okay so they want to maintain it so for that they are asking more maintenance charges this is the first disadvantage the second disadvantage is that everything we are storing in one place we have what are the values will be there everything we are store in a centralized server if someone has attacked the server what will happen so entire thing will be getting collapsed these are the two disadvantage two disadvantage will be there in the conventional system in order to overcome that we are looking for the blockchain technology for an example these are the two blocks across the globe our network should be connected how the two network should be connected just you have to see that the validation verification consensus that logical program it will do the things and then we are making the connection between the two computers that here you have to consider the two blocks and then our network should be spread across the globe okay so peer to peer system another advantage is that peers are not necessarily known to each other so another kind of introduction of the blockchain technology how do we establish trust among the peers in a such a decentralized system so already i told it uh, if you are having the two system how the two system has been communicated first of all we have to do the validation verification consensus if everything is matched means the communication has been established if the communication has been established means the next thing is that transaction will start from one computer to another computer okay so when the transaction is over that value will be stored in the register this register is a kind of tamper proof register it's a kind of sealed nobody can hack it nobody can change it if somebody they try to change it it will not happen so this what kind of name of this register is that immutable distributed ledger so what i'm trying to say validation verification and consensus and immutable recording of that register it yields the trust and the security of the blockchain those who are using this technology obviously they will say that for an example if you are looking for the definition and introduction of the blockchain technology in google or wikipedia whatever it is lot of explanations are coming that they are technically correct but it is difficult to understand they are using this technology those who are using the technology they will obviously say this this will be a perfect example uh, this is the perfect definition or perfect introduction but my condition is that those who don't use the technology those who are not understanding this technology i need to target the people to make them understand let's get started so already i told that i'm going to i'm going to tell the three level of understanding the first level of understanding is that easy level so this is the first example i'm going to tell and then one second we will come back to that uh, introduction and the definition of blockchain then you will get the complete you will uh, get the each and every aspect of the blockchain technology the first level is easy so there is a two server mechanisms are available direct download server for an example i am going to download a movie from the official website so for that i am this is my laptop i will give the money to this uh, particular server 500 rupees for an example so they will give the 1000 mb file to me if the next person he want to get the download the movie and then he will pay the he will pay the fees and then they will give the data so like that this is called as the central server client mechanism okay everything is a control in a centralized manner just you have to think the bit torrent i think uh, most of the students are available here so you would have experienced that uh, by using the bit torrent uh, movie download right so that is the best example for the peer to peer connection same thing which it is applicable in the blockchain technology how it is getting evolved just you will see that so the coming to the second point 
here i have already download the movie one of his one of my friend and he don't want to get the movie from the centralized server he don't want to pay the money so for that he is approaching me for that i am giving the torrent file torrent file it's a kind of key file so if i share the key file if he is having internet all the movies datas will go from my laptop to my friend laptop one of his friend he is asking the same key file and then he is sharing the file what is happening here whenever he open that particular instant half of the movies going from my laptop and then half of the movies going from my friend laptop okay coming to the fourth person what will happen for an example 1000 mb 1000 mb of movie so the fourth person also he got the torrent file so whenever he is opening it what will happen 1000 mb will be divided by 3 and then 310 310 mb will be coming from each and every laptop just you have to think that there are 10 people already they have downloaded the movie okay the 11th person he is opening the key torrent file what will happen this 1000 mb will be divided by 10 so 100 mb will come from each and every laptop this is called as peer to peer transaction same thing will be implemented in the blockchain technology that we are going to see still if you are not understanding that next i am going to tell the next level of example that is a easy level very easy level okay there are two persons are there person a and a person b there are two persons are available here they are transacting the money the person a he is transferring the money to b the money is about 50 uh, 10000 10k okay he also received the 10k both are they are maintaining register a also maintaining one register b is also one maintaining one register based on his convenient a instead of 10k he is writing 12k in his register what will happen to the b based on his convenient he is writing 9k this is not correct right so how we can overcome this solution so for that we are calling the third person unknown ps we are calling the third person and then a is giving the money to the c and then he will do the validation and the verification and then he will make the agreement so the 10000 rupees that amount is transferred from a to b like that he will do okay after that he will share the money to him transaction is completed so after that what will do each and everybody they are having the register so the c person he will enter the values in that each and every register when the moment he enter the registered value value uh, the value he entered that in the register nobody can hack it it's a kind of tamper proof nobody can change it this register is called as a distributed ledger immutable distributed ledger immutable distributed ledger means we cannot able to change anything just i am telling for example 3 okay in the network lot of people are there so this register will be shared through the the people those who are connected in the same network so that's why it is called as a immutable distributed ledger okay same thing will be available in the blockchain what are the persons he is doing right this is called as a mining in the blockchain i will tell it later okay so this is the best example for similar to the blockchain technology explanation so if still if you are not understanding that i am going to tell the next funny example that very very easy level so from that you will get the complete idea about the blockchain technology okay so coming to the third one i am going to give the magical book to all of you okay in this webinar most of the you know, lot of people are available so i am going to give the magical book to all of you so what will happen here i am the first person i'll give the amount to the 10th person okay when i'm giving that the amount at the time this magical book it will store the value transaction details it will store it the 10th person he will give the amount to the 20th person at the time whenever he is giving give, he started to giving the amount at the time it will store the values in the register just you have to see that what are the movements i am doing in the magical book register right now you can able to see what are the changes i am doing it same thing this register is called as a immutable distributed ledger so nobody can change it everybody you can see the right present transparent uh, that transparent movement right that is called as that blockchain technology same thing which it is applicable in the blockchain technology i think you hope you got idea about this by using this example what is the blockchain technology one second i will tell the introduction then you will get the clear idea so before that i will clear everything okay fine so now we have to come to the point bitcoin enabled an innovative platform for peer to peer so peer peer to peer means i will share the resources to my friend without any central authority 
Okay, without any central authority, how did, did Bitcoin realize trust and security? So we are going to write the software program. The third person, he is doing the validation, verification and the agreement should be made. If everything is matched, means what is happening here? The transaction will start from one computer to another computer. So one computer to another computer, the transaction will start if everything is matched. So in this case, these are the blocks. This logical program, those who are doing by the miner, I told it, right? The third person is doing it, right? That is called as the chain. Okay, so when the transaction is started, at that time, we have to store the value in the register. This register, whenever you enter the value in the register, nobody can change it because it's kind of sealed one. Because of it's kind of tamper proof, so nobody can hack it. So that is the beauty of this technology. So hacking, it is not possible in this technology. I hope you understand what is the blockchain technology right now. Uh, these are the examples. Don't forget. So then you will be obviously get it. The, what is the insight of the blockchain technology? So coming to the application of blockchain technology, where we are going to apply this technology, there are a lot of uh, enormous area we can apply this blockchain technology. In this pandemic situation also, in the COVID-19 situation also, we can apply the blockchain anywhere. So keyword is that if your application is a distributed in nature, obviously you can go for this technology. Okay, the first you are coming to the point. The first application is the finance sector. All those developed countries already they have implemented this finance uh, that uh, blockchain technology in the finance sector. In India also, 2030, all those banking sectors are going to convert in terms of blockchain technology. Coming to the healthcare, right now. We are not having the proper ventilation ventilator right now. How much quantity which it is available because again the healthcare sector is a kind of distributed in nature. The obviously we can apply this technology in the COVID-19 situation. We cannot able to track the patients. So by using the technology, we can able to get it. And then government in the government also tax voting voting also from the from your home itself. You can able to enroll your vote if you are having the phone by identify the face recognition and then we can enter the vote. That kind of thing it is happening. OK, I will tell it later what, what kind of things will be there. And then manufacturing industry. Manufacturing industry from the raw material itself, what are the process will be there? There are a lot of distributed process will be there. So whenever the distributed application, obviously you can go for this technology. So coming to the next one. So goods transfer. The best example where we have to apply the blockchain technology. This is the major role, prominent area we have to get for the blockchain technology application. Okay, supply chain. How many of you know about the supply chain? For an example, uh, I want to buy the pen. Okay, from the raw material itself, you you want to decide it. What kind of material it is made up of? What kind of ink it is made up of? What kind of color material it is made up of? So like that, each and every notification you will be able to get. For an example, if you are buying that online uh, purchase for uh, using the Amazon, Flipkart, whatever it is, you can able to see the tracking, right? The product is dispatched and then it's coming from Mumbai, it's coming from uh, Bangalore, it's coming from Manipal, like that you are able to get it, right? So that is called a supply chain. So you can able to monitor each and every position where the product is there, like that. This is called as a supply chain. Okay, so this is also distributed nature. Obviously, you can apply this technology. And then while coming to the other kind of uh, applications, remote services delivery, uh, example, travel and tourism, travel and tourism across the globe, it's a kind of distributed nature only. Now it is possible, now it is not possible in the pandemic situation, but we can apply this technology in order to get more advantage. And then you have to see that most of the IT sectors, they are concentrating on in order to have the trust and the security. Obviously, they are looking for the entire concepts or replaced by this blockchain technology. And then you have to see that education and credentialing also we can able to get by using this technology. So coming to the electrical power system, uh, we are generating the power. We are transmitting the power. Finally, we are distributing the power to the consumer. OK, whatever the power we are sending, the same power will not happen in the receiving end. OK, so for that, what we are doing, doing it in the receiving end, again, we are putting some generators. That is the distribution side. We are putting some generators in order to support the main grid, right? So this is also again the keyword is that distributed is coming. So whenever the distributed it, uh, distributed applications will be there, means obviously you can go for the blockchain technology. 
apart from that there are 12 prominent blockchain applications to uh, you want to you must know know about this uh, uh, this uh, specialization see that many prominent blockchain applications are available i'm not going to talk about each and every one of uh, application for an example voting mechanism just now i told about the voting mechanism from your home itself you can able to enroll your vote nobody can change it just you have to enroll the vote that's all nobody can change it nobody can hack it from your face recognition from your fingerprint other person they cannot able to enroll your vote that is happening in the foreign countries therefore that is happening in the some of the developed countries same same thing so one more application i want to tell the real estate business in the real estate business lot of uh, brokers are available lot of intermediaries are there if we are implementing the blockchain technology this broker this all intermediary persons are getting eliminated so we can e we can easily track that those who bought the land at first so those who bought uh, the land at second so we can see the history we can track the history by using the blockchain technology so these are the prominent area which it is available by using the blockchain technology okay now we come to the point where is the origin what is the origin of this blockchain technology that we are going to see elaborately uh, the person the person name here i am going to talk about the bitcoin from the digital currency only this technology is getting evolved enormously so from the business perspective first of all we have to get the knowledge then only we can uh, we can able to understand what kind of technology is this okay so from the bitcoin point of view i will tell so bitcoin was created by one of the person the person name is satoshi nakamoto he have published one paper one research paper one white paper white research paper so just you have to see the importance of the research paper from the research paper it is getting one technology is getting evolved enormously okay but the mystery is that since right now today up to this day we are not able to identify the person who is he whether is he or she that we don't know this name is also not his original name just he published one research paper from this research paper this entire technology is fallen in a one particular category okay so bitcoin is a digital currency uh, right now bitcoin is uh, the most wanted one right so i will tell what it is how the digital currency is formed first of all we have utilized the physical cash right now everybody we are using the credit card or a debit card whatever it is right now we are in the transition of moving towards the digital currency that is a bitcoin okay so the history of bitcoin so already i told about that 2008 Satoshi Nakamoto he published on paper so from the paper the bitcoin network is started at the 2010 first cryptocurrency stock exchange is launched after that 2011 what happened means then we can able to google it and then you can able to see that one bitcoin equal to how much dollar it is okay one gram gold how much it is like that we are getting it right so how much the petrol price like that we are able to get from the google like that One Bitcoin equal to how much US dollar? So from that it is started by 2011. Just we have to see the transition. 2013, one Bitcoin equal to 100 US dollar. After 2014, Microsoft accepts the Bitcoin. He accepts the Bitcoin. What happened after that? One Bitcoin equal to 10 U 10,000 US dollar. Just we have to see the transition. Those who bought the one Bitcoin equal to one US dollar by 2011. the same person if he kept the bitcoin right now what what happened the transition 10000 us dollar okay as per the statistics today today i checked that from the google you'll able to see that how much one bitcoin equal to how much us dollar okay last year and all we are not able to get the indian rupee conversion right now we are able to see the indian rupee conversion also right now we have to see that one bitcoin equal to excuse me sorry One Bitcoin equal to eleven thousand seven hundred six US dollar. See the transition. Those who bought the two thousand nine ten thousand US dollar thousand USD dollar, it is getting increased. Just you have to see the Indian rupees eight lakh seventy seven thousand six thirty five point seven four. So I am not going to talk about the business perspective. So from this only, this technology is getting evolved enormously, and then we can if uh, we can able to cope up with the other kind of technology. so that is the point i want to try to say here so each and every day this uh, rate will change okay this <coughs> transition will change just you have to see that just you have to google it one bitcoin equal to one us dollar like that you have to search it you will get to the know, get to know this kind of uh, statistics data 
Okay, so what kind of network we are going to use in the blockchain technology? So there are three networks we are following it. One is centralized network, another one is a decentralized network, the last one is a distributed network. <coughs> Sorry, chat. Okay, sorry for the interruption. See that coming to the centralized network, there is a centralized server. So already I told the two disadvantages. Millions of transactions are stored in the particular centralized server. That is the one disadvantage. For that, we are asking the more maintenance charge. Coming to the second point. So what is the second point? Everything is stored in the centralized, pay, centralized place. One place, if you are storing it, if anybody attacks that one place, what will happen? So the entire thing will be getting affected. Okay, this is a kind of centralized, uh, centralized government like that. You have to be able to think. This is uh, just you have to see the state government. Again, we are having that. If somebody hacked this particular thing, what will happen? Other things will be getting affected. Okay, so coming to the distributed network. So distributed network, it is connected to that each and every net, every node point. Just you have to say that. There are two blocks are available. This is the first block, the second block. How the connection communication has been established here? The validation, verification, and the consensus. If everything is, everything is matched, means that there will be a logical match will happen after the transaction will happen. When the transaction is over, that value will be stored in the particular register. This register will be throughout the network, throughout the computer, throughout the block, they can able to track it. So nobody can change it. If one person they are trying to hack the things, what will happen means he is not able to hack the particular node. If he want to access this node, he want to hack all other nodes. So that's why this technology it will not allow the hacking. Okay. What is block? What is the content of block? What are the contents are available inside of the block that we are going to see in the blockchain work? Just you have to see that there are three things, three important things are available in the blockchain. One is data, and the other one is a hash, and a hash of previous block. So these are the three which it is consisting of one block. Okay, first of all, we have to see one by one. What is the data? For an example, we are transacting the digital currency. The amount is coming from where the amount is coming from. That value will be there. Okay, that information will be there. Where the amount is going to, that, uh, that uh, information also will be there. How much amount is transaction? How much amount is transacted? That, uh, that value also will be there in the data, in the form of data. This is the first part. The second one is the hash. If I'm saying hi, you can able to understand it, but the machine cannot able to understand it, right? So in order to have the security, we are doing the encryption and the decryption. Okay, so for that, we are, we are not, we have to write some kind of algorithm. For an example, just you have to say the fingerprint. There is a unique fingerprint, right? Everybody, we are having the unique fingerprint. If you want to access this particular block, there is a one particular. There is a particular fingerprint will be there. OK, if other person they are trying to do means if other person they are trying to change the data that will not be possible. OK, so one more thing here. There are three blocks are connected. For an example, this block is having the data and as well as the hash value. And then what we'll do means that uh, previous what is the block that hash value also will be stored here. I will tell the purpose of in the next slide. OK. So how the communication has been established? The validation, verification, consensus. If everything is matched, means this communication has been established and then transaction will start from each and every block. This is the normal operation of the blockchain. But why we need, why we have to store the hash of previous block, I will tell in the next slide. OK, so here for an example, I'm going to show only three of the block. So this block is having the data and it will have the hash value. This is the hash value. This is the hash value for the particular third block. OK, previous hash which it is available. What is the previous? Previous also there is a one block. It's having some separate data. It's having the hash value. That hash value we have to store it here. OK, coming to the second block, it's having the hash value and as well as the data and then it will store the previous hash value. OK, so coming to this first block, the, this previous this particular hash value will be available here. The previous hash, if it is zero, means that is our starting block. That is called as a genesis block. Okay, why we are doing like this? What is the need of previous hash block? We have to do that. For an example, we have to someone there try to change the data in the second. Okay, so what they will do means 
that logical program it will see that what is a hash value if you try to change some data that hash value will change this hash value will be compared with the previous block hash already which it is stored in the next block right that we have to compare it logical will not match so you cannot able to change the data that is the beauty of the blockchain technology okay so if somebody they want to for an example i'm uh, here i showed only the three blocks just you have to imagine there is 100 blocks are available okay what i'm trying to say in this if one of the person he want to change the block he want to hack the 100 blocks then only he can able to hack the second block so that is the beauty of the blockchain technology what uh, what uh, main important point i want to note it down here we cannot able to change it if you hack the only one block, that is possible, but that is not possible in the blockchain technology. Okay, so 100, you can able to, if you, you can able to have only one server, that is possible, but you cannot, if you want to hack the total blocks, that is very, very difficult in terms of hackers perspective. So that is the thing I try to say. If you want to particularly hack one block, so you want to hack the thousand blocks. That is very, very difficult. To hack one system, it is possible, but you cannot able to hack that hundred system. You cannot able to hack the thousand system. So that is the beauty of the things, which it is everything it is connected in the same network. So you cannot able to hack it. So that is the beauty of blockchain technology, how the blockchain process is happening. So if the two computer want to communicate with the one another and the transaction, how it is happening, we are creating the block and then we are doing the consensus validation verification consensus we are doing it and then this block will be added to the existing block who will do who will do the this mining process already the existing people they will do it okay so for that we will give some incentive okay so after that your new block will be added to the existing block and then transaction will start from one computer to another computer okay what are the issues of with the current banking system so already i showed one of the picture in the introduction part right so we are the customer and then if you are going to purchase something 200 dollar you are giving it lot of intermediaries are there just you have to see the example lot of banking sectors are getting involved they are maintaining lot of servers right so for that they are asking the maintenance charge the so finally how the merchant how much amount he will get 195 dollar second thing is that hacking in 2017 Number of frauds in India through ATM cards and net banking total 1785. Each this much cases are available. Each and every case is about one lakh or more. Uh, two days back also, I have received one of the mail uh, from my institution. One of the hacker uh, he sent the mail to our throughout the institution, and the principal want to communicate like that. One of the my friend he spent uh, he lost twenty five thousand rupees from that. Right now it is happening in this pandemic situation. Everybody, the business are very dull. Business are not in good uh, shape and the, everybody they are doing this kind of hackable things. So you'll be very careful while replaying your mail. OK, so what I'm trying to say, if we are implementing the blockchain technology in each and every sector, the hacking will not be possible. OK, so if you are implementing the blockchain technology, what is happening here? We are eliminating the intermediaries. We are eliminating the intermediaries. So there is no intermediary. What will happen here? How much amount we are spending it? A merchant, he will get the same amount. Okay, why the $1 it is happening here means, I told you, right, the minor people, the that minor, the minor, what they are doing it? They are doing the validation, verification, conscious. Third person, they are doing it, right? For that, we have to send some incentive. So this is very less when compared to the conventional system. So we are getting a more advantage in terms of blockchain technology. OK, so that's all about the introduction part of blockchain technology. Uh, and then you have to see that what is the evolution. So the first version of evolution in terms of blockchain 1.0, in terms of we have to say the digital currency Bitcoin. Uh, coming to the second version, right now we are in the blockchain 2.0. Everything we are writing smart contract. Smart contract means we are writing the program by using that value, we are doing the validation, verification, something like that. We are doing it right so that we are writing the contract. If contract is matched means then only the communication has been established between two blocks. If the communication has been established, then only we can transact the data from one computer to another computer. Right now we are in the smart contract. Again, we are adding the more kind of smartness in the contract. That future version will be in a different one. Blockchain 3.0 almost uh, 
we are in the verge of uh, smart contract uh, we are in the end of the smart contract period right now for the next year almost uh, blockchain 3.0 we are going to see in the blockchain 3.0 okay okay so already i told about that logical program we are writing the logical program but where we have to run the logical program we need some platform right so there are very variety of plat platforms are available everything is an open source here here another beauty of the thing is that everything is an open source ethereum these are the platform which it is available in terms of blockchain uh, technology there is ethereum hyperlogic ipm uh, blockchain at the multi chain hydra chain and ripple articoda and then lot of uh, platforms are available you have to write the program when i started uh, when i started this uh, blockchain technology research at the time i am not able to get any single program i am not able to get any sample program for my suggestion is that just you have to go through this first two ethereum and hyperledger fabric we don't want to install any uh, this uh, ethereum software okay if you are having the linux okay just you have to say that uh, remix ethereum there is some url will be there from the url just you will open it there are lot of sample programs are available just by using the trial and error method you have to go through it and then you have to change the uh, some little bit data and then you will be able to get you will be able to write your own coding for your application okay my suggestion is that these two platform it is uh, working very perfectly uh, i am not experiencing about other other platforms right now i am getting that ethereum i i am using the ethereum platform i my suggestion also just is for the starting point of you just you go for go through the ethereum and then lot of languages also will be there serpent uh, solidity and then python also you can able to uh, use this blockchain technology platform okay so what are the other core components which it is available in the blockchain technology so in this case already i told about that uh, we want to do the encryption and the decryption so for this we have to tell that uh, some if you see the old dawn movies uh, they want to exchange that some diamonds so for that what what they are doing it they are telling some password based on the password only they will uh, interchange the diamond and they will interchange the amount similar to that our that is called that is the best example for the encryption and decryption okay so in order to have the most security trust and security we are having the asymmetric cryptography so there is a, in a cryptography algorithm we are having a two cryptographic algorithm one is symmetric cryptographic algorithm another one is asymmetric cryptographic algorithm so in this blockchain technology we are using asymmetric cryptography so what is the difference between symmetric and asymmetric cryptography for encryption and decryption if you are using only one key that is called a symmetric cryptography for encryption and decryption if you are utilizing two key one is private key and is a public key that is called as asymmetric cryptography so what i am trying to say here we are getting the more trust and security while we are using the asymmetric cryptography so that kind of uh, cryptography algorithm we are utilizing for our blockchain technology and then transaction will start when the transaction will start if everything is matched so yeah, when the, when the when the transaction will start our consensus if our agreement is made okay after that transaction will be start if the transaction will be over means we are storing the values in the distributed ledger this register will be like immutably distributed throughout the network okay so your computer is connected to the 100 computers so what will happen this register will be distributed throughout the 100 computers in the same network this is the main core components we are having in the blockchain technology and then see that uh, already just now i told that there is a public key another one is a private key so that kind of asymmetric cryptography we are utilizing it if one of the key is not valid means the transaction will ha not happen from one block to another block so they will block it that's all so previous hash value also will be there just now we have discussed in the previous slides okay so next we are going to see about the classification of blockchain system what are the classifications are available Th there are three major classifications are available in the blockchain system one is a public blockchain another one is a private blockchain another one is a consortium blockchain public blockchain means anybody can view the transaction details anybody can see that if the network it is connected with a thousand computers anybody can see the transaction the first person he communicated with the third person third person he communicated with the tenth person like that everybody we can see that more transparent will be there in the public blockchain while coming to the private blockchain the particular organization people only they can able to access it other uh, other public people they cannot able to access it that is called as a private blockchain coming to the consortium blockchain there is a combination of 
the public blockchain and the private blockchain, which it is consisting of single packets that is called as a consortium blockchain. In some of the government organization, they want to openly, they have to show the sum of the part. And some of the part they will not show to the public. So that kind of application, we can go for the consortium blockchain. My suggestion is that as the student point of view, industry, many of them, they are doing the public blockchain only. Okay, so because we don't want to spend any amount towards this. Okay, here we are going to see the comparison between the public and the private blockchain. Here, a lot of data are available. I'm not going to talk about all those data. Uh, just you have to see that in the top side, it is uh, representing the public blockchain. In bottom side, it is rep representing the private blockchain. So these are the details for a private blockchain. So these are the data for public blockchain. I'm not going to tell all those points. The Ethereum, already told, right, that Ethereum, that is, we can apply the, we can make it utilize of the public blockchain. Okay, so like that, one more company is there. So from that, we had, we can able to get the private blockchain. Okay, so registration, that free access. So that's why I'm telling that as a student point of view, as industry perspective, whatever it is, there is a free access. We can able to use our blockchain technology for your application. Okay, so I'm not going to talk all those points. So only one thing, many of them, they are asking about the manipulation. So in manipulation will not be possible in the public blockchain. But in a private blockchain, possible. There is a manipulation, it is possible. But everybody cannot do that. Okay, for an example, if you are taking an uh, organization, institution, uh, who is the head? The chairman, or otherwise principal, he is the head of the institution, right? He will be able to do the changes of some manipulation. Okay, for an example, as a country perspective, who is the most superior one? The president. So president only he can able to change the data. Others, they cannot be able to do that. Okay, so manipulation will not be possible in the uh, public. That is possible in the private blockchain. That is the point I want to tell it here. Okay, so that's all about the uh, introduction about the blockchain technology. Now we are going to see the some of the use cases. I will go a little bit faster and then you'll get to know knowledge about it. How bad we are applying that technology in somewhere. Because why I'm going to tell this health cases in this pandemic situation, we are suffering a lot. So definitely we have to get the what is the impact of the blockchain technology in the healthcare sector. Okay, a lot of the government projects also across the globe, most of the country and the most of the government organization, uh, they are expecting the people from, we need some solution in order to overcome the COVID-19. So this blockchain technology is also helping in a lot. Okay, just we have to see the healthcare use cases where we are going to apply the technology. Okay, if you are going to the hospital, what is your primary uh, primary expectation will be there? So first of all, we have to need the trust and improve the quality of care. And right now in the hospital system, we are having a lack of interoperability. So interoperability means, uh, for an example, uh, you are staying in on your hometown. Right now you are staying in your hometown and then uh, you suffered something from your uh, illness and then you are going to the hospital. So what they will immediately they will do, they will start to do some testing process. Okay, and then after two days, everything will be fine. They they started to do the medication and then you completely normal. And then you come back to your home. Due to some unavoidable circumstance, you are going to the other state. Okay, in the other state. So due to some unavoidable circumstance, again, you are getting the illness. So what you will do, you will not come to your hometown, right? Those who that, uh, which it is available near to the hospital, that hospital only will go there. So again, you will go to the hospital. What is happening there? Again, they will start to do the process, testing process. Okay, as per the doctor statistic, they are telling that each and every hospital test data will be different. That is one of the doctor he uh, he told in the statistics uh, uh, journal. So what I'm trying to say, at the other state people also immediately they get access to your data. What will happen? So what is happening right now? So other people also, other hospital also, they will talk the, they will take the uh, they will take the test from the starting onwards so for, uh, due to that what is happening time is wasted your money is also wasted and the life ex expectancy also will waste okay and then we can we cannot be able to access the data difficult to access the data that is the another uh, uh, case which it is available in the right now in our uh, medical healthcare system okay but if you are implementing the blockchain technology this will be the answerable one okay this is your data. This is your data. 
okay this is the hospital which it is connected in the network throughout the india for an example you are in the karnataka state okay your data will be available here okay just you are going to the tamil nadu so you are getting some discomfort there and then you are admitting in a, you are admitted in one hospital so when you are giving the when you are joining there at the instant they are start to do the medication if immediately they will get the concern from the hospital if which it is connected in the same network what will happen immediately they will get they, uh, they will get your test data so immediately they will start the medication here the next question will come how is the privacy will be there okay because everything is locked nobody can change it nobody can access it based on the patient consent only if you are giving the green signal only the particular hospital data will be allowed for an example hasp karnataka hospital they are having your test data just you are coming to the tamil nadu in the tamil nadu people just you are giving the consent just you are giving the green signal then only this doctor can able to access your data so based on the patient consent only other doctors they can able to access it okay so here what is happening here these two persons they are not able to identify what is the problem again they are asking they are requesting you one more retired doctor is available in the some other state just if you will give the green signal they will start to they will give some idea so from the retired doctor also we can able to we can able to give the access immediately he will do the he will tell some other suggestion immediately they will start the medication your human life expectancy will be saved so how the technology will be help, will be helpful to the humanity just you have to see that okay so there are five steps are which it is available we are getting the we are giving the data to the particular hospital and then we are storing in a particular server and then that will be stored in a blockchain environment your data will be stored in a particular blocks so whenever you are giving the consent that particular hospital only they will access the data so finally that another hospital doctor he will get the access of your data immediately they will do the medication process so that is the beauty of the blockchain technology okay so key points in the healthcare sector so patient center system based on the patient convenient only based on the patient consent only they can able to access the data other doctors they cannot be able to access the data so interoperability interoperability will be the answer for this blockchain technology and then genomic data so we can uh, we can maintain the data very safely and securely and then the research data set right now if you are having the data of the covid 19 patient so we can able to find out the vaccine as soon as possible okay from the china something they got affected by uh, 19 itself right so at that time if we got the data across the globe someone they would have try to find the vaccine as soon as possible right so if you are implementing this blockchain technology data set will be shared to the across the globe okay so from this we can able to get the trust interoperability and the security okay so blockchain with help with help with the covid 19 he if i am taking this it will take so much of time so what i'm trying to say i will conclude this uh, slide alone uh, in order to that uh, healthcare sector so covid 19 for a faster adopt- adoption for the blockchain technology for healthcare and ibm they launches the uh, to support covid 19 response world economic forum also they have i implement they have deployed the blockchain deployment toolkit and then who oracle microsoft ibm everybody they are concentrating right now in the blockchain sector okay so coming to the energy sector okay one of the use cases i told i think you got some glimpses of uh, what is the importance of the blockchain technology um, actually i have completed my b and uh, m tech and as well as pgc in electrical engineering so i want to do some good things to my department right so where we have to apply this technology in a energy sector that we are going to see so blockchain in energy sector where we are going to use this means microgrid what is the meaning of microgrid so already i told clearly what is the power we are generating from the generating station that will be sending into receiving and same power will not be happen okay the sending in you are gener- you are giving some power the same power will not happen in the receiving end okay so in order to support this what we are doing it in the distribution side we are putting some generator okay so, so this is called as water distributed generator so whenever the distributed it is a kind of application obviously you can go for this technology in order to have the more trust and the security and the controllable action 
okay definitely obviously you can use the blockchain technology in the energy sector okay what is my microgrid so microgrid concern for i'm going to tell one simple example then you'll get a clear idea about a microgrid okay so microgrid means for an example in your area there are 10 milkman there are 10 milkmans are available okay so what is their duty means they are getting the milk from the cow and then they are pouring the milk in the common milk tank okay this is the just you have to consider one example there are 10 milkmans they are getting the milk from the cow and then they are pouring the milk in the milk tank just you have to see that what is the the common milk tank that is government they are organizing it okay just you have to compare it this common milk tank just you have to compare it with related to the centralized grid centralized in order to support the centralized grid we are in need of some micro grid okay micro grid means if you are generating the power by using a solar rooftop panel that is your micro grid that is you are the one milkman so like that 10 people they are generating the power by using the so their rooftop solar panel and then they are if you are having the excess power they are giving to the centralized grid okay if one of the power is not getting uh, having the proper quality that entire power will be getting affected that is a power quality problem i am not going to talk about this for an example i am telling this okay the 10 milkman is equal to each and every milkman just you have to consider so one micro grid and then common milk tank i told it right that is the centralized grid okay in order to support the centralized grid 10 milkmans what they are doing the power they are pouring the common milk tank right same thing the 10 micro grid they are supporting the main grid okay so this is the called as micro grid micro grid means the particular area people for an example in your college uh, you are generating the different power sources by using the solar power pan solar power panel rooftop solar power panel and as well as the wind power generation biomass fuel cell like that you are connecting it and then which it is connected in a common point that will be applicable to your college that power is utilized for your college that is called as what is called as a micro grid so if you are having the surplus power then you can able to give it to the government okay so this is called as a micro grid okay so what i am trying to say here what is the blockchain technology i am trying to say there are 10 milkman i told you right so the 10 milkman first of all those who are in need of the milk by the neighbor just you have to give it to them and then if you have any surplus power then you will give it to the government okay same thing have to consider it. you are generating the solar rooftop panel you are, you are generating the power by using the your solar rooftop panel but you are going to the office by the morning but the morning only the solar power it will generate more power right if you are not utilizing any load those who are in need of the power by your neighbor then you can sell the power to them and then you get the money from them if you are having the surplus power then you will give it to the government so they will give the amount okay so here what i'm trying to say you have to sell your power that wasted power will be there then you have to sell the power to your neighbor this is called as a trading so energy trading the blockchain will play the major role okay most of you are uh, available as a student right just you have to see that energy trading how we can sell the power from one home to another home so this is a, this is a distributed in nature right so this obviously we can go for the blockchain technology so microgrid is a distributed energy resources only so obviously you can use this technology okay this is called as a microgrid what is my smart grid what is the difference between microgrid and a smart grid microgrid is not a smart one we are making the smart as a grid right so for that electrical power system is there we are having the generation transmission and a distribution okay again if you are adding the ict information and communication technology if you are adding it and then if you are adding some intelligent towards the grid that grid is called as a smart grid in electrical power system what are the three things important will be there one is generation another one is a transmission another one is a distribution just for a second <coughs> sorry for the interruption <coughs> in electrical power system three major categories are available one is bulk generation transmission distribution okay in a smart grid component you have to see that other four components which it is available one is customer markets operation and a service provider here what i am going to try to say what is a smart grid is that based on the customer availability we have to generate the power okay in a previous case there is only one way communication the generation we have to generate the power we can transmit the power we can distribute the power whether the consumer they are getting the power or not it's continuously we are giving the power what i'm trying to say here based on the customer 
he is telling that i am not going to utilize this load don't uh, don't generate the power like that he will give the information this is called as a two way communication two way communication which it is possible communication means the communication technology will be add internet things will be there so this is called as what ict information and communication technology we are adding it and then we are making our grid is a very intelligent one so intelligent one that is called as what smart so we are making our grid as a smart okay so based on the customer availability for an example if you are having the uh, two way communication in the energy power sector what will happen here if you are having the prepaid energy okay so 30 units you are getting from the government you are recharging for the 30 units at the end of the 29th unit uh, at the end of the 29th day you are exhausting all your power so at the time you are requesting the uh, requesting your request to the power supply energy people what they will do it they will give the power so it's a kind of prepaid so it is a two way communication which it is possible in the smart grid so smart grid is also it is supporting with a mini micro grid okay smart grid is that if you are getting the power supply if you are you are always depending on the power supply from the government if you are not getting the power supply then you will get the power from your neighbor why you have to wait for the government so <coughs> again the distributed things will coming to the picture so whenever the distributed things will be there obviously you can go for this blockchain technology so coming to that blockchain in energy sector these are the prominent area these are the primary area we have to concentrate on the blockchain technology in energy sector uh, i am working on a two field that i will tell it later in the next slide so our ultimate aim is that we have to meet the supply and the demand so demand is growing uh, gradually is getting increases demand is growing enormously exponentially it is getting in a, uh, increasing okay so we have to meet the supply and the demand by using the energy trading so in the energy trading blockchain will play the major role so this is called as a peer to peer trading okay and then blockchain based billing model for an example there are 10 homes are available okay so if you start to the trading one of the uh, one of the home they are selling the power for 1 rupee other home they are selling the power for 50 50 paise so obviously you will uh, where we have to have that those who are selling the power with less cost obviously have to choose that right so we are making the co competitive trading okay that also will be possible so that's why i'm saying that blockchain based billing model this everything will be in a transparent manner for that we need the blockchain technology and then peer to peer lending we can share the power we can share the solar panel so that is coming to the peer to peer lending and the green certificates how much power you are generating by using only the solar and the wind hydro biomass like that so for that how much power we are getting we are generating by using the renewable energy sources because it does not harmful to the environment and the distributed file storage in your everybody each and every home you are having the energy meter right so in the energy meter how they are accessing it one of the people they are coming to home and then they are taking the reading and then they are giving the information to the people and then they are giving the bill to you so for that you are paying the electricity consumption charges just you have to imagine if the blockchain technology will be implemented means from the control center itself they have to get to your readings data so again the distributed things will be there right because each and every home we are having the meter that meters will be distributed throughout the area so whenever the distributed things obviously we can use the technology okay so what is the what is the role of blockchain technology in the energy environment so first of all we are having the transition towards centralized power okay the centralized power our 60 percentage of power generation happens only from the coal oil gas so coal which should be available only for 200 years oil which should be available only for 65 years and gas will be available only for 48 years as per the statistics data i am telling it after that our proven reserve capacity is gradually decreasing it 60 our as per the india statistics we are generating we are depending on 60 percentage of power from these of conventional sources so continuous combustion of coal oil gas what is happening here the proven reserve capacity also it's getting decreases continuous combustion of oil gas coal oil gas what is happening here it does pollute the environment so global warming is coming so in order to overcome that we have to promote the renewable energy solar power wind power hydro biomass like that lot of renewable energy power generation we are promoting it but the problem is that night time we cannot able to generate the power 
as per the indian statistics just you have to see that we are not able to get the predict the steady wind then how we can able to generate it okay so we have to utilize the renewable energy sources at fully we can use the utilize the renewable energy as fully so for that we are looking on alternative technology that technology is a blockchain just you have to see the transition in centralized power we are generating the power by using conventional sources because continuous combustion of coal oil gas global warming is happening in order to overcome this we are promoting the renewable energy but renewable energy is a volatile behavior so in order to utilize full renewable energy we are looking for alternative technology that is called as a blockchain technology we have to make utilize a full renewable energy definitely we are looking on alternative technology that is called as a blockchain okay so so within a 5 minutes i will finish it off um arkanesh shall i produce uh, proceed for 5 uh, minutes is it fine yes sir yes sir okay fine so see see that energy trading energy trading is happening here how the traditional process are happening this is the right side it is indicating the trading in a blockchain environment so just you have to see that conventional generation which it is available there is a transmission unit network and operator there is a energy company for an example uh, in bengaluru there is a bescom in tamil nadu there is a tamil nadu electricity board okay like uh, andhra there will be some in the different uh, energy company people will be there okay so this energy company they are able to control over all those transaction details all those how much power you want to deliver to the home that everything they are controlling over in the energy company okay so they have to decide and then they will they will control the process in a trading they will control the process in the how much power we can give to the industrial user how much power we can give to the residential user like that we can able to get it from the energy company we are relying on only the energy company in the this is the traditional process just you have to see the blockchain implemented process there is no intermediary we are eliminating this energy company what are the power you are getting it what are the power you are generating it that you have to give it to your neighbor if you are having surplus power that you have to give it to the government so government they will give the amount okay here you have to see that these are the power generation this power generation is directly communicated with the industrial user industrial user as well as the residential user okay so there is no intermediary that is the point i want to make it ensure of it here okay so already given the explanation in the first slide one second i will tell that the key point of this peer to peer trading how it is happening this if you are generating power your solar power panel solar uh, to rooftop solar power panel that you are giving the power to your neighbor that is called as a peer to peer so peer to peer means obviously we can use this blockchain technology okay so here without intermediation of any third party we don't want to rely on the government we can sell the power you can generate the revenue and then dynamic pricing one of the home they are selling the power for 10 rupees another power another another home they are selling the power for 5 rupees so there will be a mixed pricing details will be there so we are making trading in a competitive environment okay and then if you are having any surplus power and then you can sell the power to the government consumers providing service to other power companies and then distributed file storage also i told because uh, if the smart gate will implement means the first of all they will implement the smart meter in your home so from the control center itself they can able to access your data how much reading it is there like that you can able to get it and then the peer to peer lending i told right so lending in terms of uh, buying a share in a solar plant and the renting an electrical storage and the sharing your charge point because all those vehicles are replaced definitely after 2 2 3 years all those vehicles are replaced by the electric vehicle at the time uh, if you are having the plug and uh, plug and play what will happen so everybody the, they will see the uh, those who are ready to sell the power for your vehicle from the app lot of apps are available in the developed country they can able to see the nearby location where the charge we can able to put it so they will come to your home they will put the charge and then they will pay the money so you have to share your charging point that is also possible using this blockchain technology and then crowd source crowd source is a kind of if consider there is a 100 solar power panel or uh, solar power panels are available okay the first 10 solar power panel is given to the one person next 10 solar panel is given to another person so there are 10 different distributed solar panels will be there distribution will be there so how we can control over that each and every person again the distributor is coming to the picture obviously if it is your application is a distributor means obviously you can use the blockchain technology and then green certificates 
So already I told about how much power you are generating by using the renewable energy, that green certificates will be there. For an example, here I want to point out one important point uh, towards that. There are 10 homes that are available. Okay, so 11th home they want to add in the blockchain network. Everybody they are using the uh, rooftop solar power panel. Okay, they are using the solar rooftop power panel and then they are sharing the power from one home to another home. The 11th person, new person they want to add here. So what is happening in the right now in the current system, electrical power system, they want to get the approval from the some of the energy development agencies. They want to get the approval from the some of the government people. Okay, but if the blockchain will be implemented means within a two, one or two days, you can able to join with the existing system. Okay, so that is possible, I'm trying to say, by using the blockchain technology. And then virtual impedance trading, many of them you are now very well about uh, uh, passive components, RLC. By using the inductance, what will happen here? There will be oscillation. So there will be oscillations, right? In order to getting this oscillation, in order to uh, prevent this oscillation, we are giving some damping injection toward the power system. Okay, so the damping system, they are making it an online. The damping system, so damping injection, they will put it. After that, what will happen means this transient period will die out. And then we are getting the steady state operation. Okay, this damping injection, they are giving in terms of online. They are trading it. Okay, I am working on this field, virtual impedance trading. Okay, most of the uh, developed countries, uh, they are implementing this. Many of the researchers also, they are uh, working on this. Just if you have time, just you'll go and see that, you'll get the complete idea about this. Because of inductance, we are having the oscillation. In order to prevent this oscillation, we are providing the damping injection. The damping injection, they are selling through the trading. So if you are giving the damping injection means what will happen, this oscillation will be getting eliminated. This is the transient period. You can able to get the steady state as soon as possible. Okay, so I am working on this field. Okay, so these are the companies. Uh, they are having the blockchain. That they are implementing the energy blockchain in the environment. I don't want to talk about all those things. So only one thing I want to tell. Brooklyn Microgrid. This I am going to tell in the next slide. So there is a Brooklyn microgrid project which it is available. The first energy blockchain which it is implemented. Okay. So see that in the rooftop everybody they are having a solar panel. Okay. They can sell the power to the neighbor. Okay. Uh, when the, when will able to get the payback by using the solar PV? So for a solar PV payback period means how much amount we will get it back after investment. 18 years after 18 years only we can able to get the full amount that full payback for by using the solar power panel but in this technology if you are selling the power to the neighbor you can able to generate the revenue so payback period will be reduced that is the another advantage by using this blockchain technology okay so one more point i want to tell here so country name is one country name i want to tell one i want to mention important thing that entire country is running on the blockchain technology not only the energy the government the government that the entire country is running on the blockchain technology. They didn't see the physical cash for the past two years. They are using the blockchain technology in energy. They are using the blockchain technology in the COVID-19 situation. They are using the blockchain technology in the traveling. That the entire country is running in the blockchain technology. You, can, you, you may ask what is the advantage we are able to get it. There is no money inflation. There is no political conflict. There is no unemployment. Everybody is happy in the citizen, Estonia people, citizen, they're very much happy. So that's why I'm uh, requesting you, all of you, just to have to see the importance of the blockchain technology, just to have to try to do some of the projects towards that. Okay, so then you will get some idea. Okay, so here one new word is coming is that prosumer. What is the prosumer means? From the same example in energy perspective, you are generating the power and then you are consuming the power and then you are selling the power that you can call it as a prosumer okay so from that we can able to generate the revenue okay so we are getting the many of opportunities so i'm not going to talk about all those points uh so the first point i will tell that lower transaction cost due to cutting off intermediaries there is no intermediate there is no broker there is no government just you have to sell the power to your neighbor just you have to sell the power to your neighbor and then you can able to generate the revenue and then uh, market transparency, you can able to see that the first home, they deliver the power to the third home. How much power he sold, 
how much how much amount he uh, he transferred from one place to another place like that each and every history of the information you you will able to get it so lot of opportunities are available in the blockchain technology these are the prominent industry they are promoting the energy blockchain environment and each and our micro grid as well as smart grid so coming to the indian scenario by 2030 sba they have announced all those uh, conventional banking system is converted into blockchain okay i'll share the link at the end of this webinar then you'll come to know that okay coming to the energy blockchain uttar pradesh to become the first state to launch blockchain enabled peer solar power sharing they already initiated that pilot project already started okay so delhi india number 14 2019 electricity distributor bs bses rajasthani power limited has partner they have signed the moe with the power ledger company which it is available in australia they are leading company global leader in a blockchain based uh, renewable energy trading and then they are implementing the peer to peer energy trading trial in delhi so already that pilot project has been started okay so this is the point i want to tell so obviously this is a new kind of technology since uh, we are having lot of uh, difficulties in order to implement the blockchain technology energy consumption it will consume more energy because lot of blocks will be there right and the scalability uh, that we are saying that billions of network also we can able to communicate with the existing block if you are matching with the logical programming if you are matching with the continuous assessment then we can able to scalability and then you have to see the fake block generation that also will be possible in the blockchain technology because due to the advancement some of them they are try to say this is the new block so you can pay the for this block like that they are getting the money laundering people they are doing this kind of activity and then high latency uh, as per our indian power system very ancient structure we cannot able to change anything by tomorrow but one day it is possible okay so conclusion what i am try to say in this circumstance so by using the blockchain technology we can able to energy trading we can make it the energy trading between the peers in a secure way and then if you using the ethereum we can able to make the smart contract okay so since some a lot of issues are there if you are overcome all those issues then this technology will be the give the most answerable in the energy environment so these are the carriers are available in the bengaluru lot of opportunities are available all those it sectors they are concentrating on this uh, blockchain environment these are the some prominent destination destinations are available blockchain developer architect developers and the solution architect sales engineer blockchain analyst and then if you are having the developer programming skills php solidity python and serpent lot of languages are there there are lot of uh, job opportunities are available right now most of them they are misunderstanding that there are no uh, job opportunities no right now there are lot of job opportunities are available in a student perspective so see that linkedin has over 4100 roles listed in us in terms of blockchain there is 1406 roles are available in the uk and then crypto jobs has over 60 roles listed in worldwide okay so demand is growing and now is a great time to learn about this blockchain technology okay one of the quote i want to tell at the final if knowledge is power then learning is a super power so you have to identify your super power by using this super technology by learning the super technology okay the for, this is the course i have completed in the coursera the course offered by the university of buffalo it's a kind of four specialization course then if possible you will get the more knowledge just you have to enroll the course then you will get the more knowledge towards this technology so what is the mission i want to tell the last slide about this uh, webinar research activities as academician uh, i am requesting to that academician people that has assistant professor professors Uh, there there is no such good books are available in order to uh, motivate this blockchain technology if you start to write it this technology will be go to the each and every nook and corner okay so they everybody they will get the advantage of it so that is the first point i want to tell uh, i am staying in a since i am staying in a bangalore one of the company they have approached me they have told clearly about the blockchain but i know very well about the energy environment so just i have to associate it with them and then we are doing together we are doing some project and then they are asking their students if they if you are if your students they are good in a blockchain environment just you have to tell them i will get that placement like that they are try to say so we'll get the industry consultancy project also so we can able to make the 
collaboration with the industry they will also grow ourselves academic institution also will grow okay last but not least uh, i have to encourage the students community to learn about this thirst area our nation will grow and then uh, yourself yourself also will grow so we will get the more motivation towards the blockchain technology in order to make it utilize of it okay jai hind thank you so if you are having any specific query or if you are having any i am having lot of ideas in my mind if you want to look for some of the uh, problem statement for your phd for your uh, pg project for ug ug project i am ready to help you uh, this is my mail id this is my uh, phone number also i am ready to collaborate with you all at any time you will call me at any time you will send mail just i will share some of the materials also with you and then you will get more advantage of uh, then you will get that uh, familiar of this technology okay thank you thank you organizers uh, thank you thank you sir uh, thank you sir a few people are requesting for the slides to be shared sir uh, will you be doing that yes uh, so uh, i will share the actually some contents i will share but uh, that complete uh, ppt okay i will try to share it no problem one point of contact that okay. i will give the slide to the organizers then you will make contact with the organizers then you will get the ppt yes sir we will do that thank you thank you sir uh i uh to conclude i say manipal has conducted this uh, webinar and we would like to thank you sir for coming to this uh, for providing us the opportunity to let you uh, to have you here um uh, and i think that's about it thank you sir thank you thank you is there any queries